My parents came in here in, in 1932, and uh, after all those miles, they, uh, when they, they drove into this valley, they, they knew that was the end of the road. They, they knew this was what they were looking for. Why they knew what it was, uh, you just have to see it to, to know. That's the rule of the land. Leave gates like you find them. If you find them open, you leave them open. If you find them closed, you can leave them closed. <laughs> uh, my name is John Dooling. Uh, I'm a second generation rancher in the upper end of the big hole, right on the real headwaters. Uh, I'm 67 years old, I think. <laughs> And you know, I've always often wondered what it's like to see the big hole for the first time because uh, I was born here, so it's just a mighty beautiful place, I think, and we're really blessed. And that's that's one reason we want to keep this the way it is because it is so great. Is uh, oh, years ago, nobody even thought about you know conservation and. Uh, damage to the environment. Environmentalism is a fairly new discipline. We didn't worry much about it in the old days. It was, it's always been there and it always will be. We've all become aware of what, uh, you know, that conservation is something that uh, is important <clears throat> before we lose it, lose it all. So here we are, uh, way ahead of where we were. <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> So this part of the big hole is in, in excellent shape basically because of John Dooling's stewardship and the Dooling Ranch was, is protected by a conservation easement with the Nature Conservancy. Um, it's one of the, the best uh, examples of good riparian habitat we see in the upper big hole valley. So that's why we're here collecting willows. We want to collect the willows from this, this uh, riparian area and plant them on ranches all over this, the Big Hole Valley um, and change those areas to look more like this. I'm Nathan Korb. I'm 30 years old and I work for the Nature Conservancy of Montana and I work here in the Big Hole Valley. I think the thing that's so unique and special about the Big Hole Valley is the combination of an intact ecosystem um, rich with wildlife and, and native diversity, fused with a community that's about as old as uh, Euro-American settlement is to this country. And they, they really feel a sense of responsibility and stewardship for this place. And this, this will fill in, assuming some of them yep. grow. Yep. And, and then the whole idea is to have this whole thing lined with, with willows. Yeah. And that keeps your water cool, is that the idea? All my life I heard about the Big Hole River. Well, according to what the people who are supposed to know tell us, you know, the Big Hole River is in trouble. So, and it's not just the Grayling, I don't think. My name's Calvin Herb, and this is uh, our family's place up in the Big Hole in the Beaverhead County. This is Rock Creek that you're looking. It's actually the new, new stem of Rock Creek. They uh, recreated Rock Creek so it came into the river above Headgate so that the fish could migrate up here and spawn. So what we're trying to do is figure out how that we can recreate this habitat 
and still operate a ranch. And that's, that's what the goal has been from day one. Back in the, the mid 80s, you would expect to catch 50 to 70 grayling in a mile of, of the river. Um, last year we had less than 10. I'm Pete Lamoth. I'm a fisheries biologist with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, 39 years old. Well, we're out on the Herb Livestock Company uh, property and we're standing next to Rock Creek, which is uh, really ground central for grayling restoration in the Big Hole Valley. This stretch of the Big Hole River was uh, the main spawning area for river dwelling grayling in the system. Well from a biological standpoint it's a very sensitive species. Adults can move 60 to 80 miles in a year uh, and so if you're going to preserve a fish like that you have to make improvements over a big chunk of land uh, and do a lot of active restoration when we have the opportunity. Hopefully someday this is white with the backs of, of grayling migrating upstream. My name is Jeff Everett. I'm a biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, 32 years old. We are standing at the Rock Creek Restoration Project on the Herb Livestock property. We reconstructed Rock Creek through this new channel, um, or reactivated the stream through historic meanders and have reconnected this stream now to the main stem of the Big Hole River. There's a lot of old families up here that have managed their property for hundreds of years that, you know, I mean, they've been here and made a survival of it. And, you know, that way of life uh, revolved along, around the, the sole management of their property. If they wanted to abuse their property, that was their choice. Uh, they have, a, I think, an, a, a deep-rooted distrust for what conservation means as defined by some of these other groups. First thing that they remember back in the uh, 70s and 80s when a lot of the rhetoric was, you know, red meat's dead meat, uh, get everybody off the forest, and it was kind of in their face a challenge almost. The same people who would do that called themselves conservationists. And the irony of that is, is if you look around, at this valley, you got to ask yourself now, well, really, who is the conservationist? I don't think it was just the ranchers that changed. They've changed too and figured out that, you know, we can fight forever and nothing gets done. So if you really want something done, let's figure out how to get it done. I think that people are kind of watching us, and I don't know that they are looking at us as any type of leadership, they're just seeing, if we fall off the end of the earth, then they know not to go there. For a long time, there's been the thought that uh, cattle ranchers and private landowners who have large intact working cattle ranches have been the enemy, and that is not the case. Um, large, large landscapes are where it's at as far as recovering species that are uh, either threatened or endangered or, or need a little bit of help. So the, the trick for, for my generation of biologists is finding that that we can work collaboratively with these landowners and it'll get us where we need to be. It, it's turned out to be a lot bigger but a lot better than what I think Pete or I ever had imagined. Looks like she had some twins. My great granddad homesteaded here in the late 1880s. Uh, he came from Sweden. 
I'm Guy Peterson. And I'm Calvin Peterson, Guy's son. Uh, we're longtime ranchers in the Big Hole. Uh, I'm fourth generation rancher here in the Big Hole. Uh, Calvin's fifth. When you talk about ranchers, uh, ranchers in the valley here, you know, we're pretty smart, just ask us. But uh, I think we've come to realize we don't know everything. Uh, so so uh, we, we need to evolve and, and change. And We've been interested in an easement on this place for a number of years. Preserve this ranch, preserve the integrity here of this ranch and protect and, and uh, enhance uh, the habitat for grayling. Uh, but we don't, we don't have the money to fund the kind of projects that uh, need to be done. My future, personally, I want to be here. You know, hopefully someday uh, my brother and I will bo both be on here with our families and stuff and raise our kids just like I was raised. We have development to the west, we have development to the east, to the north and to the south. So unless the community and the conservation groups can come together and address this issue, we may save the grayling, but we'll lose the whole landscape. This is the North Fork of the Big Hole River. This is the, uh, what we think is, uh, or hope is gonna be our next project. This, this portion alone, uh, when you get the fencing done, the stream restoration, I mean, I think conservatively you're going to be over a quarter of a million, you know. So, yeah, there's a lot of projects that can be done. It's just nobody has any money. I think that the ultimate goal for us is, is not so much the, the grayling, but to save the area and to preserve something that means a lot to the people who are here. We had my daughter here yesterday planting willows. Those trees will mean a lot to her 30 years from now. Those will really mean something to her or her kids or something like that. By having her out planting those willows and doing some of that stuff that, that if the time comes that it's not somebody comes along with a bunch of money and says, geez, we'll give you, you know, enough money so that you could be you know, wealthy for the rest of your life if you want to sell this that she stops and thinks and says, well, what is it I don't have that I need your millions for? I like being able to fish on Rock Creek. Well, I hope to see this valley uh, continue on. And I think with our efforts through the conservation easements and so on, that we can preserve this lifestyle and for future generations. And, and uh, I'm hopeful about it.